when I first acquired the school, um, I met with the teachers like the first day. And so I was like, what do you want me to know about Plummer? Like, what should I know about it? And so it was often repeated from the teachers that we're the best kept secret in Cedar Hill. People don't really know about us. The school's kind of tucked off. It was kind of like the school that was over there. Um, people weren't really at the bit to attend. Um, it was just kind of like just there. And so after meeting the teachers and hearing their passion and their love for the school, it was my sole mission that everything I wanted to do was to build, encourage, and uplift the teachers, the community, and the students at that school. And so my non-negotiable for being a principal was culture and climate and having an expectation of learning. Um, we had low test scores at the time. We had a high social economic uh, population. And so I came in strong. And to be honest with you, George, there were a lot of people. I was young at the time. I was, I think, 32 as a principal. And a lot of teachers there had literally been there like 30 years, like mm -hmm. for real. And so here I am, I'm new, I'm fresh, I'm young, I'm exciting. And I was kind of hit with resistance at first. Like, why are we doing these things? Why, why is this important for us to celebrate and to engage and to take the time to have conversations and really get to know our kids and our families? Um, but it was a non-negotiable for me and I was relentless at it. And so everything that we did on the campus, I would tell the staff, we're creating experiences. Mm. It will create every time someone steps a foot on this campus, every time you have a conversation with the teacher, every time a kid walks in your door, you are creating an experience. And what experience are we going to create on this campus? Positive culture and climate was is was the standard. And so, for example, let me give you an example. Most times when it's like meet the teacher, you just go to the school, you get a slip of paper, you show them mm -hmm. who you're is and that's it no experiences and so we did it like every year we had a theme so like one year we did like it was a circus and so we we actually made like a ticket booth we had like red carpet we had a popcorn machine we had lady outside doing bubbles we hired a dj um you went to the ticket booth to get your ticket to find out who your teacher was and then the clowns took you down the hallway to to, to the room we decorated like we made people when they walked in that building feel like wow and when you do that you're setting that tone that number one they care enough about me to create an environment to make me feel welcome um and then mm -hmm. you see kids eyes light up we were in a low socioeconomic school my kids didn't have those experiences that the kids across town had so they may not have been able to go to the circus they might not have been able to go to a concert or to have different people come into the campus and so i didn't let that be an excuse i brought those experiences to my kids and to my family and to my community and i'm so very proud of that and so everything we did so for example i Deion Sanders came to our school to talk to our really? dad. Let me tell you, you want, let me tell you this story. So we had all pro so my again, I was building culture and climate. And I, I I knew that there was a lack of fathers and dads in our schools and the presence of our students. So I wanted to, to cultivate that. I wanted to generate getting father figures, getting dads involved in the school. And so we had an all dad, all pro dads program. And so I'm like, uh, I really want it go big. I really want someone who's credible, who can speak to the dads. So this is when I first got on Twitter. I was not who I am now on Twitter. I was like, like nobody. <laughs> and I'm still a nobody. I'm but dying. Are you, you, I'm like, I'm dying you. right now. Let me I'm tell dying. You. I know so what's coming. I, I'm dying. Well, let me tell you. So I literally, so Dion at the time lived in Cedar Hill, which is where yeah. our district is. And so I knew he lived there. And so I got on Twitter and one day I tweeted him and I was like, hey, Dion, I was like, I'm a principal in Cedar Hill. I need you to come to my school August, no, October is like October 29th for All Pro Dads Day. Well, of course, I didn't hear anything. It's Dion Sanders, right? <laughs> so the next day I get on Twitter. Hey, Dion, I know that you saw my tweet yesterday. You didn't say anything, but I need you to come October 29th for All Pro Dads Day. George? I lied to you, my, and Twitter's open, so you can go back and look years ago. I tweeted that man every single day, every day, <laughs> every day for over a month. I had kids get on there. Hey, I dad, love it. Come, come talk to my dad about being a dad or what? Like, I had teachers get on there 
every day I would wear like a jersey and be like, what's up? Like, <laughs> so, um, and, and so I never forget one day I was, uh, my, my girlfriend, my best friend, she got married and I was in Jackson, Mississippi over the weekend. And so I was at her wedding reception and I pulled out my phone to tweet him because he didn't respond <laughs> for like the 45th day. And I see that I had a message from him in my inbox and I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Then I got nervous. Cause I was like, he's probably going to like, Hey, like cease and assist, like stop. Right. Tweeting, like <laughs> leave me alone lady. Like, and so he, um, he responded and he said, um, contact my agent at blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He knows, I, like, he knows that I exist. And so that, that, uh, following, week when we got back so i called the um i called the agent or whatever and somehow he was on the phone or in the car with them and so i was like the first thing i was like dion i don't have any money i can't pay you i know that you're worth everything i said but i need you to come to my campus the kids deserve it the dads need to hear from you like please like with everything in me just come to our campus our you know our community needs you he was like girl uh it's october you know it's football season i can't come <laughs> You know, he's like, do you not know who I am? I'm like, yes, I know who you are. I'll change the date. Whatever date you want it to be it done, I'll change it. Just come. And so we were literally on the phone, literally. And my secretary buzzed in and she was like, um, Mr. <laughs> here. And I was like, shut up. Oh, my God. And so he was happened to be in the neighborhood. So he rolled he rolled up and he came to the school and he was there. And I was just in shock. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. Deion Sanders is literally sitting here. So the power of social media, um, but it, I didn't even know I was going to talk about that, but just, just the experiences, mm -hmm. how it was so important to me. I was relentless about bringing my kids the best and, 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 and highlighting it and marketing. I went to Twitter. So we had a superintendent and he came years ago and he was like, you guys have to get on Twitter. And my first thought was, I'm not getting on Twitter. I already have Facebook. I already have Instagram and I don't have time for another platform. But I'm also that person. Like, if you give me a challenge, I want to exceed it. So right. when he said that, you know, we have to get on Twitter. Cool. I'm all in. Let's go. So I, I um, got on Twitter. I told my teachers and they, of course, at first weren't receptive to it. So I said, hey, you have to tweet at least once a week. Mm hmm. I mean, that's not that hard. At least once a week. Show the great things that are happening in your classroom. You're doing the work anyway. You're engaging. You guys are phenomenal teachers. When you're doing a small lesson or you're doing a, an, a presentation or the kids are engaged, take a picture, put it on social. And so I started promoting everything, every day, all the time, the great things that were happening on our campus. George, when I tell you, after four years of being at that campus, the com culture and climate had completely changed. We went from the lowest performing district uh, school in the district to having distinctions, to performing mm -hmm. at the highest level possible. We had the highest waiting list for students that want to enroll That's in our amazing. campus. I mean, we were like the campus. People wanted to go to Plummer. And so, you know, I'm just so thankful that social media was a, was a there so that the, that I could show what was happening. I could share that with our parents and our community, and I could highlight the great things that were happening um, on our campuses and how amazing the teachers were, and that we created a culture in a school where kids felt important. They felt valued. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when you set the tone that when you walk in this building that you're loved and you're valued, think about what that does for your right. ability to learn. You take those barriers and those guards down where students feel like I can be vulnerable. I right. can say to the teacher that I don't understand. I know that my classmate isn't going to ridicule or bully me because we didn't tolerate that. Um, teachers felt free to think outside of the box and create lessons that you know, not just textbook. Right. I told the teachers, I want you to go outside and hang from the tree, or I want to see you like, you know, down the hallway with chalk painting on the walls or whatever, because it just mattered.